So good morning. Uh, my name is Morak Trunyani. Uh, I'm based in Prague. And I would like to discuss with you uh, a case report of the patient with a diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. So this is a very interesting case. Actually, uh, the patient is a male. He was born in uh, 54 and he is a physician, a hepatologist. And in October 25th, as he declared, in the uh, year 2012, he developed some flu-like symptoms, uh, he was febrile, and within a couple of days his urine became black, and with a couple of next days he developed the icterus. So he was admitted to the Department of Infectious Diseases because there was a, a suspicion that it can be uh, hepatitis, but they very um, early find that uh, the cause is probably the li huge lymphadenomegaly in the retroperitoneum and the patient was transferred to us. When we admitted the patient to the, to the hospital, he was in a performance status 3 according to uh, WHO. He uh, had uh, pancytopenia, uh, with the hemoglobin level 84, the platelets 54, and he, was, he had a very elevated bilirubin level, uh, which was almost uh, 20 times uh, above the upper limit. The transaminases was elevated as well, and the LDH was uh, 27, and the limit in our lab is 3.6. Uh, moreover, she developed uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation, so the patient was in very serious condition. We know that uh, there is um, some mass in the retroperitoneum, but we didn't have a diagnosis. So, because of the suspicion that the liver can be involved as well, we performed a transugular bio biopsy. And as you can see, there was an infiltration of the by the lymphocytes and the diagnosis of the diffuse large B-cell uh, lymphoma uh, was performed. Uh, you can see the CD20 positivity. The diffuse large B-cell lymphoma definitely is not the homogeneous uh, uh, disease, it's a group of diseases, and the most frequent use of the discrimination is uh, the cell of origin. And uh, we use the immunohistochemistry based um, uh, discrimination according to the Hans, uh, published almost 10 years ago, and we perform CD10, uh, BCL6, and MUM1, and you can see that based on these uh, uh, findings, we can conclude uh, that the patient has a non-GC subtype of the diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. We perform staging, and uh, we found that uh, there is, uh, besides the lymph node sites, there is uh, liver involvement, the spleen involvement, bone marrow involvement. Uh, so we can conclude that uh, the patient has a clinical stage 4B with the systemic symptoms. Uh, and uh, then, according to the International Prognostic Index, the patient had a high risk profile because of the elevated LDH, more than two external sites involved, a poor performance status. So, how we can treat this patient? This is definitely a young patient with a poor prognostic features. And we have a variety of options from the standard RCHOP21 till intensified treatment, uh, RCHOP14, RCHOP14, dose adjusted epoch. Uh, mega chop, uh, and we can consolidate this patient with a high dose treatment with the stem cell transplantation. The data which uh, compare uh, the, the trials, which compare uh, directly head to head uh, RCHOP14 versus RCHOP21, failed to show any advantage of the RCHOP14. It was published in, by the David Cunningham last year. And although this trial covered uh, all age subgroups, 
there are some uh, subgroup analysis uh, was performed and uh, it showed that it is true for the different IPI subgroups as well as uh, different H subgroups. Regarding the high dose treatment with the stem cell transplantation, now we have a four uh, randomized trials but two out of them showed uh, the advantage of the stem cell transplantation and two uh, failed to show an improvement by the stem cell transplant consolidation. So, we have decided to treat, to treat the patient by the con uh, convention way with the RCHOP21 and the patient was scheduled to receive eight cycles. We performed the first restaging after the three cycles and that time already the patient was in a partial remission which was PET positive and after the sixth cycle the patient already achieved the complete remission PET negative. So we were happy where we administer two more cycles of RCHOP. We performed the final restaging at DMA and unfortunately we found the signs of progression. Uh, there were the PET avid uh, enlarged lymph nodes in the abdomen and there were uh, suspicion on the bone marrow involvement. At that time, the patient still, have, uh, still had uh, a good performance status. Uh, one, according to the ECOG, he had a slightly elevated LDH. So the secondary IPI was a low intermediate risk or high intermediate risk according to the age adjusted or uh, the complete IPI. So this is a tricky situation. So the patient just finished the complete full uh, induction treatment and he progressed. What is the outcome of these patients? So we know from the CORAL study published a couple of years ago that the patients who failed the rituximab treatment and who failed the treatment early, it means within one year uh, from the end of the previous therapy, these patients have a very poor outcome with only around a 20% probability to be alive within a three, four years. So this is exactly the patient. So what you can do with this patient? So we didn't have any, any other options than started uh, with the salvage treatment and planned the autologous stem cell transplant. We administered uh, three cycles of uh, rituximab uh, DHAP protocol. We successfully uh, collected the peripheral stem cells and we were lucky because uh, the patient really entered to the second complete remission. So in July, we uh, performed the high dose treatment with the beam chemotherapy and the autologous stem cell transplant and the patient uh, was transplanted in the complete remission PET negative. So we expected that the patient can sustain in the complete remission. We performed uh, the final restaging two months later and in the September we found unfortunately again some signs of the progression, how it was uh, described by the nuclear uh, medicines. So uh, this involvement was uh, localized and was only in the liver. The patient was without any symptoms of disease, normal LDH. He was in the process of the recovering, uh, of the recovery from the autologous stem cell transplant. Uh, we performed the workup, so we, the uh, PET positivity have a poor CT correlate, poor USG correlate, so we performed uh, the liver uh, MRA and uh, we didn't find any clear signs of the lymphoma involvement. We consider it can be infectious disease. We didn't perform, we were unable to perform the targeted, uh, targeted biopsy of the, uh, of the uh, involvement. So we have decided to wait. And fortunately for the patient during the follow-up, uh, there were some uh, times of the fluctuation, some uh, new lesions appeared, some uh, lesions uh, regressed. 
So and on the last PET CT, which was performed six months later, uh, found that uh, all lesions disappeared except one, which uh, decreased in terms of the size and in terms of the uh, of the activity. So, although we do not have a really clear picture, we are convinced that this is not the signs of the lymphoma recurrence. Uh, probably it is uh, some kind of the infectious disease. Actually, uh, coincidentally, at that time we had another patient after autologous stem cell transplant who developed uh, hepatosplenic calciosis. So, uh, with a very similar PET picture on the on the liver. But these particular patients I'm talking about, he was without any uh, antimicotic treatment. So during his last visit one month ago, I can conclude uh, that the patient is still in remission. He felt well and uh, he had a lot of plans regarding buying of new house and reconstructing this house. So what I can conclude from this particular and very interesting case. The first one is that uh, up to now there is still not a standardized treatment for young poor risk patients. So, and uh, we hope that the new targeted therapy can improve the outcome. The second conclusion from my point of view is that Although the patient at the time of the relapse have a poor prognostic features in terms of the probability to fail salvage treatment, this patient responded well, he passed through the stem cell transplant and he is in complete remission. And the third uh, conclusion can be that we always have uh, to, uh, to evaluate very carefully the PET results in the content of the clinical case in the content of the uh, physical findings and uh, the other laboratory findings because in that, in that particular case I really do not believe that the PET positivity represented the relapse of lymphoma. Thank you very much.